Hey there, I'm Tiffany Youngren, host of Next Step Nation, where we help podcasters and YouTubers with vision become preeminent thought leaders in their industries. You are about to have the incredible opportunity to listen as we dig into the why, who, and what of a podcaster show. Then at the end, we will identify one powerful how, one action that she can take for results in the next 30 days. Today, I am so excited to welcome Natasha Bazilovich, host of Speak With Power. Natasha, welcome. Thank you, Tiffany. This is so exciting. (laughs) I know. I'm so excited to talk with you too. Uh, Speak With Power has released 56 episodes from January 2021 until the day of this recording, which is August 5th, 2021. Natasha Basilovich is a speaker and a public speaking expert. She is founder and president of Change View Academy, where she trains entrepreneurs and corporate executives to give powerful presentations. So Natasha, tell me, why did you start Speak With Power? Mm -hmm. Actually, that was a very interesting journey. I never thought I would start a podcast. I just had a program, my public speaking program, and one of my clients, after finishing it, she comes to me and she says, Natasha, I want to start a podcast and you should create a course, how to start podcasts. (laughs) And I said, well, I don't have mine. How can I teach (laughs) others if I haven't started my own podcast? And so so she's like, yeah, well, then you should start and then you should teach us. (laughs) <laughs> okay, maybe I should start a podcast. That's interesting. It's connecting with people. It's speaking and it's creating content. So it's everything I love. And it's, then I talked to my business coach and she said, it's an amazing opportunity to meet and talk to people who otherwise wouldn't give you their time. And mm. I met incredible personalities and just unbelievable, fascinating people who I got to pick their brain and get free coaching even. Yeah. And it was, oh yes, it's, it's just such a, an amazing journey. Oh, that's so cool. I love your enthusiasm about it too. I can completely relate. In fact, I, I was telling you earlier that before this interview, I've been, and I do this every time. If I interview somebody for the hot seat, I'm listening to their show. I'm trying to figure out, you know, just trying to get a sense of it. And sometimes I just get totally sucked in and I could tell it's the more I was listening to your show, the more I'm like, I love this girl. Like I cannot (laughs) wait to hear this woman talk about podcasting and what I'm hearing right now is on point (laughs) with exactly what I expected. So I appreciate it. I just appreciate your enthusiasm. And also I just, and usually I don't geek out early on about um, things that I loved about the show because I do that later, but um, I really love how, how you ask questions and you say back what you're hearing, like you actively Mm -hmm. hear and you you know, interpret what they're saying. You don't just repeat it back, but you're interpreting what they're saying. So I love your style. I love your enthusiasm. So thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little. So, so why you started and how you started is really awesome. Um, ultimately, why do you think it was important though? Because you can like our clients have ideas all the time. Right. And so you could have picked up any, we have to pick and choose. So yeah. why, why podcasting? Why did that resonate with you as being something that was important to be able to hand over to your clients? Well, first of all, podcasting, it's speaking and I'm a public speaking coach. And my dream and my mission is to help other people also speak with power to get their idea, their business, their service. Maybe that's not even a business. Maybe they want to start a nonprofit or start a movement. And my mission is to help them take this idea and then bring it out into the world and share it. Because a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet, they are scared to mm. speak in public about their ideas. And so for me, that was this this mission and is to help them. So what I was thinking, and I'm still working on my YouTube channel, it's still in the process. And I was thinking, well, podcasting, yes, maybe I should start with podcasting and not really YouTube because it's a little bit easier. My coach, she has her podcast for three years. And so she has the whole process mapped out of how to do it. And it's it's about speaking. And also it's very easy to consume. So that was Mm. another reason because I love podcasts. You run, I'm a runner, I'm a marathoner. So I go for a run. I listen to podcasts. I walk from home to the office. I live really close to my office. So I just walk there and it's, I I listen to audiobooks and podcasts. You go to the store or do whatever, clean in the house and it's listening. You can do, you can multitask. And that's why I was thinking that 
pod and they keep hearing how podcasting is still growing it, yes there are a lot of them 2.5 million but still we are growing and and uh, i decided i'm going to I'm going to join now. Yeah. Get on this bandwagon before it's oversaturated and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm so 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 happy that I did it now and for everybody listening, if you still don't have yours, you got to start it now. <laughs> That's awesome. That is good advice. <laughs> Definitely. Well, and you think about it, you know, I look at those numbers a lot and um, I think there are two misconceptions when we look at the the total number of podcasts. A, a lot of times when I'm, especially when I'm talking to a leader in the industry about podcasting and they're like, you know, it might be 2 million, but all these people quit. However, that content still lives on. Yeah. So even though podcasters quit more often than they don't, hmm. the fact of the matter is, is those shows la can last forever. I mean, if you leave them up, you've got blog posts out there, you've got social media out there. And especially in your situation where you're helping people find their voice or use the voice that they already have and be brave enough to do that, it's such an equalizing platform. Yes. You can yeah, literally absolutely. be anybody and put it out there. And, you know, a lot of times we get so hung up on all these big numbers that people shy away. Like, well, I only have, mm -hmm. you know, 20 listeners or, but, you know, imagine when do you walk into the grocery store and 20 people turn around and start listening to you, you know? Yes. <laughs> so, so I love it. I think exactly. That's yeah. And your idea, just this one little thing you said no, yeah, about yeah. that people stop, but it lives on, you yeah. know, this phrase that it lives on it's this legacy. That yeah. was another reason, big reason that I decided to create a, a podcast and I started writing a book. And in the future, I hope to create this YouTube channel because these are the things that will live on. I don't have children. I'm not married. And, and these are the things that I create and they will be my legacy. And when oh. I'm not here anymore, this is something that people will keep listening and hopefully it will keep inspiring them and empowering and helping them. And, and I think that's so powerful and it's, worth a lot. It is. It really, really is. Well, who have you identified as being your ideal audience? Like who is it that you're really reaching out to and working with? Well, like I said, it's entrepreneurs. It's people who have an idea already. They even have their business and they want to, they want to market it because they want to, of course, grow their business. So I help them speak about their idea, about their services, their business, so that they could market it out in, on physical stages and on digital stages. My, uh, my clients, like I have these two different sides. Like I work with entrepreneurs and I work with corporate executives. But when I talk about this, like marketing your idea, a lot of times in, in my podcast, a lot of times is for those entrepreneurs or socialpreneurs who want to speak about their idea and their business. And I want to help them overcome the fear or any other kind of block because some people they don't have a fear of public speaking they just maybe have a little barrier because they're not sure what exactly they want to speak about what is the they don't have clarity what's that mm. message that they want to share or how to do this so there are different uh, barriers and different things that I help people with but yeah mostly it's the the entrepreneurs coaches course creators if we're going to be ex more exact uh, and also another side I work in the corporate world that's corporate executive so your podcast audience specifically probably speaks more to your to entrepreneurs. side of it, the entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. To got it. Entrepreneurs. Awesome. And so what, I mean, I'm getting, I always ask this question because I, I want maybe a different answer. I know you've answered this in different ways, but let me just ask you, what problem do you solve for, for them? Yeah. What is, well, and also, I'm sorry, let me just say too, what's the problem that you solve, but also what's the transformation? Mm -hmm. So what do they, they go from here yeah. to here? Yes. So the transformation, and I have these, these are two different kinds of transformations. People who have a fear or have anxiety, have nervousness, and they want to overcome it. And they want to go out and speak about their business, their idea or their, uh, their services. And so I help these people go from 
anxiety, nervousness, and maybe even just this paralysis when they can't speak about it to actually going out and being an Instagram star, like one of my clients <laughs> recently, she went from having tachycardia and taking pills every time she needed to speak in public oh, or going live to actually creating her Instagram account and going live there every day and oh, wow. creating these videos because she started her Spanish speaking club. <laughs> so oh, wow. it's this kind of transformation. And another transformation is different. These are people who, oh, they don't have a fear. They don't have a problem speaking, but they would love to speak well, speak structured, mm. give messages and have clarity what kind of messages they give, know who they speak to. And so be those great speakers who, who have a great business already, but they want to take that idea and that business and market it on big stages, speak to 10,000 to 100,000 people. Like one of my clients, she and, she, and she's actually my coach, she had a desire, a dream to speak to 10,000 people. She wrote it and told everybody, well, guess what? A month ago, she had an, an opportunity to, well, she spoke to hundred and something thousand women <gasps> in tech. Oh. Yes, virtually. She was a part of the summit. And so she spoke, she gave a speech there. So that's oh. a different, another side or another part of my clients, my ideal client. That is amazing. You know, and I'm just going to full transparency here. I always ask these questions usually so that I can help, help the person I'm asking the questions from. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was listening to your show, obviously. And one of the main things that I talk about in the hot seats, almost always it comes up, even with marketers is what we call our audience promise. So at the beginning mm -hmm. of the show, we want our audience to know, like, this is what you're about to hear. And if you keep listening, this is the transformation you're going to see. And I think you nail it. I think that you're mm -hmm. at the beginning of your show. First thing it's like, that's the first thing you hear is boom, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to tell you about. And so I love it. And so I want it on the record, your, what your, what your thought process is so that people, I really encourage anyone who's listening right now, go listen to speak with power and then compare it to what Natasha just said. And you're going to see exactly what I mean. <laughs> so I love it. I love it. So I just have to have that moment. So Thank now you. before the show, I ask, I asked you if you'd like to focus on profitability, or if you'd like to focus on preeminence and you answered preeminence, I we always end up talking about profitability at some point. And if, when we, when there's a show about profitability, we always talk about preeminence because they go hand in hand. However, this is kind of the point where I why off and like, this is, we're going to talk about preeminence. So, um, I just, uh, I'm wondering what do you do now to evaluate whether or not your content is resonating and have you made any adjustments in the past based on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look at the episodes, I look at the number of downloads, unique downloads. And usually I look at the names of my episodes. And so I try to understand, okay, what worked, what didn't work. I understand that sometimes when I have a long title name that that probably didn't work because then I, I realized, okay, they need to be shorter. So I started making them shorter. So that's what I was like making different, improving a little bit, but then also the content. I'm not sure specifically, like when I interview guests, if, if some guests are not relevant, because I, because sometimes we don't really even talk about public speaking, even though it's speak mm -hmm. with power, but I still think that when my experts, my guests, and they are amazing, I'm just, just seriously, absolutely fascinated and impressed by those people. And when they share their life and their, their expertise with me and with the audience, I think that it's great value for entrepreneurs in any case. And they get to hear other people, other experts speak with power. And so mm -hmm. it's like an example for them. Plus they always share their tips. So it could be fitness, it could be health and wellness and anything, nutrition, but still it will work for those who want to improve speaking as well. Mm -hmm. That's why I think that all experts, all, all the guests were, I mean, you know better, so you can tell me, but uh, in that part, I think the content was relevant, but uh, maybe the titles, I'm trying to see how I could change the titles or something in the description to make it even more relatable to people and so that they would want to listen 
And plus, of course, when people, when uh, the, the guests, when they market it to their and share it to their audience, then that really affects the downloads and the, the number of listeners. So one thing I will say, I love that you have longer episodes for your guests. Um, I know we talked earlier about this show is really long when it's a hot seat, but ours typically for a more normal um, length with a guest, it's usually 30 to 45 minutes. And I love that your solo episodes, they're concise. I mean, you're a speaker and you really show what you know about speaking by how you do your solo episodes, I feel. Um, what is your ratio? Like how often do you typically do guests versus solo? And do you have a strategy around that? Yeah, I have one solo, one guest per week. So usually okay. I have two episodes per week and it's solo is released on Wednesday and then an interview is released on Friday or sometimes Saturday. And yeah, I usually, I have it on specific days, specific. Mm -hmm. And it I just goes it. like that every week. That is so good. And so how do you get your guests? Like, how do you decide this is who I want on my show? Do you have a strategy around that as well? Mm -hmm. Well, what's important for me is that that is an expert in, in an area, in their area, who speak with power. And okay. of course we can define, okay, what does that mean? Speak with power. Mm -hmm. It's a certain amount of confidence so they need to have confidence in their area in their expertise because I have wonderful friends and they or at least they used to be now there's changes in them they even wanted to be on my podcast but when I asked them so what is your expertise what do you want to well I don't really know the person <laughs> needs to know what's their expertise <laughs> what they can share with the audience. And also there needs to be this confidence because other people, they were a little bit like, you know, down, like, for example, mm. they were just like in a little bit of a depressed state and they are out now. But at that point, that's not, and I, I honestly said, I need you to be in your high spirits and in really in your high state, because that is speak with power. And we want the audience to get value, to get inspired, empowered, and to get some advice from you to, so that they could apply it in their life, in their entrepreneurship journey. That's why I, when it's friends or people who I know, then it's like this. So I, I talk to them. But so, okay, what is it going to be about? What's the expertise? What's the topic? And then the confidence, the power. Mm -hmm. But a really amazing platform that provided some unbelievably fascinating guests for me is Podmatch. I'm oh, yeah. Impressed. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Yes. Just, oh. And I have now, I recorded interviews till the, the end of November already. Oh yeah. The beginning of December, thanks to Podmatch and all of the guests. Every time I talk to them, I have an interview. I get so inspired. I guess like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm out of <laughs> breath, how fascinating they are and how much I learn from them and how amazing and interesting all over the world. Oh yeah. That is so great. You know, we just started using, well, not just started, but with, with this podcast in particular, we put it out there and have an open invitation. And I'm, I'm pretty sure on pod match. In fact, we may have found each other that way. I don't know, but also matchmaker FM matchmaker which, matchmaker. Yeah. FM, so yes. like my husband saw that on an email and I'm like, dude, seriously, I'm not dating. I know. <laughs> the name, don't you think like the name of it? I'm always embarrassed. Like, I know it sounds like a dating site, but it's not, it really is yes. for podcasters, <laughs> but, um, I guess it's dating like, for the FM, I know. <laughs> we put FM at the end. So you should know it's radio. It's like, it's not even radio, it's podcasting, but regardless, they're yes. awesome. And I also yes. have gotten really, in fact, we have a guide where it's like, it has, I list out all the different places or groups on Facebook, but I'm with you, those websites where they're really mm -hmm. about podcasters and they've got those, they've got profiles, yes. you know, especially for you, it's like self-screening. They have to know what they're talking about in order to create one of those profiles. So that's yeah. really, and you can on Podmatch at least on, on matchmaker too, because even on matchmaker, I even got the pro version, but uh, yeah. Podmatch, I didn't even have to, I still got uh, on Podmatch. What I love is the profile because you oh, yeah. can see so much. You can see the questions that they love to answer. You can see their bio, of course, and everything, but the topics and about them and just so much and all their social media. It's just such a great way to, yeah, do this screening well, of potential guests. 
and not to geek out too much, but on pod chaser, if you cross reference, if like, it depends on how deep, like, I don't always have time to do all of this, especially when you're getting a lot of requests every week. But, um, when you go to pod chaser, you can actually go to their credits and see what shows they've been guests on and listen to it right on the platform. So, Mm -hmm. so another shout out to them. And I have to actually, uh, there's, uh, there's another one. I don't think it's Squadcast because I think that's what you record on, but there's another one um, kind of like that. So anyone who's listening, mm-hmm. we have a whole list of them. So let us know. <laughs> yes. But but I yeah, I'm such a technology geek. So I should probably get back to this. But um I I do love, I love your strategy as well. Um and so let's see. So you're pretty much as far as like expanding your show and knowing if it's growing, it has a lot to do with downloads and things like that. I um, also want to kind of just reiterate what you just said, where when people want to be on your show, I like that you're both, you know, like you have to be courageous. You can't really, if you want a good show, if you want a bad show, you're not going to get listeners and it doesn't matter how good your titles are, you know? So I, I think that that's really valuable that you're brave enough to say, you know, figure Mm -hmm. it out. And then let's talk again. Mm -hmm. Uh, So let's talk about things that you're doing some other things that you're doing that's already working to attract an audience to your show. Can, can I just ask, first of all, what platform do you host on? Where do you get your measurements and what are, what kind of download numbers are you seeing? Yeah. So it's Lipson is where I hosted and the downloads were almost 2000. It, it's uh, 1925. I think we had. Yes. Is that total? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So that's total. We wait just a second. I'm looking at exactly. Yeah. 1941 right okay. now. Yes. So that's uh, average would be from 25 to 35 is the average uh, downloads for uh, okay. from 20 to 35, something like this mm-hmm, of, of the episode. Awesome. Awesome. And that mm-hmm. number is takes- a unique Mm-hmm. Yeah, that takes a while to build up. And I think, you know, as I talk to people where you're at, that's really, you know, I feel like that that's a good average at this point. Um, and what would you say has been the most effective ways that you've used to attract listeners in, so far? Mm-hmm. I think social media and I am mostly, I mean, I am on Lips, on Lipson, on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram, but I mostly live on Facebook and then the same content goes to Instagram and to LinkedIn, thanks to my assistants. And, and of course, then I go and comment and everything else, but I myself am on Facebook in groups and uh, I promote there and talk to people mostly on Facebook. And so when I post, then people see it. And then I, of course, talk about my podcast in stories and in everything and my clients know about it and my friends. And so that's how I, how I talk about it. And I think that's how I get listeners, but maybe there are some listeners who just find it by searching it. I don't even know. I I maybe need to find out more about that. Well, that's one of the pitfalls of podcasting is right now. It really is young as far as its development compared to other media types, Mm -hmm. you know, blogs and social media where the analytics are catching up, you know, even the downloads is a pretty unreliable way to know exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then with the social media, it's just, it's just hard to connect all the dots without a really big budget, (laughs) honestly. So, but it's still possible. And, and again, we were talking about earlier, you know, it's getting those, the right listeners. So if the right people are listening and, uh, interacting and engaging, then that's worth its weight in gold really. So, and then have you, let's see your, I'm looking at your brand and I know your brand is beyond just like visual, but we're going to talk about the visual brand right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, so yours is your podcast is built in with your business brand. Is that right? And do you brand yourself or do you have a company? I have a company. I started, it's called change view incorporated and I have change view Academy as the product basically of my company. But I promote my personal brand after reading Crushing It by, <laughs> uh, by Gary V. I decided, okay, no, personal brand is what I need to develop to work on. And so since then, for 
probably three years I've been working and I have my website now I have the change view website also but I have my Natasha Pasalevich uh, website and that's where I now promote everything and the colors are the same though like the colors of if we talk about visual then I have purple and orange for change view and I add blue because me myself I am just dark blue so I combine all those three colors and uh, that's those are my colors and that's my brand I love it excuse me I I actually I always I'm always looking at the different things like I said I've got two promises I made to you one was that I'd be prepared and two was that I give you a good uh, takeaway. So I'm always like, cool. I, yeah, this yeah. is one of these, like, if you are watching this on video, I'm always just, dis- it looks like <laughs> I'm distracted, but I'm actually really listening to what you're saying. And yeah. I'm, an, oh, yeah, I I'm know. a doer. You're writing, <laughs> writing, finding yeah. information. Yeah. I, I yes. can see that. That's professional. <laughs> so I've been on your website like three times and, but I wanted yeah. to look at your, your artwork, your cover is really cool. And I think that, um, you know, I, my roots in marketing are from real estate. And so that whole idea of personal brand, I think real estate agents really pioneered that whole thing, (laughs) honestly. Uh, so, so I do, I do really like your, um, your cover. You make it really clear when it's a, a solo versus a, uh, when you have a guest on things like that. So I think you do a really Mm -hmm. nice job of that. So thank you. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And then also on your website, I, I know I, you go to podcast and that's where you can find your podcast. Do -hmm. you have some, like, does it just feed in through Libsyn or do you write blog posts for every page or on my website? Yes. Yeah, well, we actually created with my assistant, we created this page just recently and we decided to have it more of static kind of page where we feature several episodes, just some really interesting episodes, as you can see, they're featured there. But then we have the, the buttons to Spotify and Apple where people can click and they can go to those platforms and see all the episodes, like the newest ones. But for now, at least we decided not to have, you know, like, every no Lipson doesn't uh, doesn't send the episodes right there right to okay. that page no not yet but I have the Lipson page where I have all the so just the podcast page on Lipson where okay. I have all the episodes okay perfect perfect and we talked a little bit about your social media strategy and the fact that you go on to groups and things like that and you have conversations when you are going into groups are you going into like groups where your ideal audience interacts or is it podcasting? Like a lot of times I'll talk to podcasters and they're like, yeah, I'm in all these podcasting groups. I'm like, is that your target audience? And they're like, no. And it's like, go to another group. (laughs) I am in podcasting groups, but I don't really interact there that much. I mostly communicate and interact in the entrepreneurship groups. And I'm a moderator in this huge group by Dean Graziosi and Tony Robbins. This, and yeah, and, oh, they're amazing. And yeah. we are the group of moderators there. These are just like most, oh, I love those people. <laughs> and Dean's team, oh, they're just such incredible human beings. And so, yeah, I interact there a lot and I give my value. I just teach public speaking skills and people see me and then they go to my page and they just go to me, to, to my own profile. And that's where they see everything about me, about my podcast. And that's how I get the audience. Gotcha. My main. And then on your website, let's see if I were to come to your website and know that you're active on Facebook, not to like call you on the spot or anything, but I don't see a Facebook link. Is there anything like that on your website? No, there is a link to my, to the group, my powerful speakers group like the community, but I actually don't. So you think I should put just links to my social media, right? Instagram. That's something that I missed that I actually overlooked. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so, great. Um, I mean, that's, you know, I look at these all day. So like I said, <laughs> like yeah. I said, at the end, I'll have like areas of opportunity. I think that is an area of opportunity, something cool. that probably is super simple, but when someone mm-hmm. goes to your website and we're going to talk actually a lot about the website at the end, because you think about it, that's where all the content, ri- like that's your opportunity to put words in. And that's how people who s- are searching online can find you because it, the more that you have ke- things that, you know, if you're talking about, you know, like I mentioned, I was totally enthralled in your, uh, episode with the chiropractor and you guys talked about customer service. 
you know, something that we all hear about a million times, which is the way that you guys were talking about was just so fascinating. So let's say I went on to, to Google and I was like, um, you know, get more clients for chiropractors or I'm losing my customers or something like that. Like, how do I mm -hmm. stop losing customers <laughs> or something? And they're looking for a problem to be solved by having text about it in your website is extremely powerful. And it is one of the top ways that people are exposed to shows like podcasts. So, um, so again, we'll talk about it more later, but ultimately since we're trying to drive people to your website, when you have people who are on Facebook a lot, like for myself, if I see a Facebook thing, a, a link for Facebook, I know that that's the now I know that if I want to know, but what are they doing today? Mm -hmm. Usually that's when I click Facebook. So having that somewhere really prompt, you know, you want people to find you where they're at. Ultimately you want podcast listeners, but you're going to find people beyond the podcast realm by having it. So your podcast can, you can leverage your podcast to get more Facebook mm -hmm. followers or, or things like that. So in yeah, fact, yeah. and I asked because I'm like, wait, I want to look you up on Facebook. So, <laughs> cause there was like, I want to see how easy it is to find your podcast, um, on Facebook. So Mm -hmm. Oh, very easy. Like every week I just post there. Oh, good. But, okay. but yeah, maybe I should also have it in the, you know, that in, on the left in the description. So that's uh, what you tell me. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have it in my link tree though. Yeah, I have. So in the bio there, okay. the top, in that link tree thing, I have my podcast there. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Let me just make a quick note of this. And um, so Okay. I really am going to, I was like, wait a minute. I could probably ask you the next question, but I don't want to forget this because, mm -hmm. um, this is such a big opportunity, especially because you're in that group. Um, so you, and, and so you're in the group, I'm imagining people are seeing you there. You're wonderful. You got this great energy. You're giving all these amazing tips and they're like, who is this person? Or like, oh my gosh, I see her every week. I want to know more about her. And they go back and they look and they just see your profile. And then it's how easy from the group is it for them to see that they can actually hear more from you on your podcast? Cause you're not mm -hmm, trying to mm -hmm. sell them anything. You're just like, Oh, you like that conversation? Well, you should, you know, you should mm -hmm. hear the rest of the story yeah, <laughs> kind of yeah. a thing. Come so more. Mm -hmm. exactly. So just kind of bringing that beyond there. So, mm -hmm. um, and then on social media, so you have a link tree link that you use, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So I got, you got the, the link, right? To my profile in the chat. I, oh, did you send it in the mm -hmm. chat? Oh, oh, thank you. Okay. So I can look at your Facebook and be mm -hmm. talking more visually. So mm -hmm. excellent. Well, so my uh, last question let me just, I, I have so many notes. Number one, because it's not even just about like, oh, I've got all these great ideas for you, but I'm like, I'm taking down ideas from you <laughs> and things like that. So, so I love what you're sharing. Um, now the biggest thing, okay. So you said beforehand that one of the biggest things that you get from your show are connections with incredible people, your guests, you want to increase your reach and you want to sell your services. That's what you want to get out of your show. Is that accurate yeah. and what else would you like to add to that I think mostly for now it's this I think I am not ready to monetize it like have sponsors and and advertising and everything like that um, but in the future I would love to monetize yeah so for now I'm growing it and I just want to like I said yes increase the reach expand and reach out to more people and get a bigger audience and then also, of course offer them my paid program and my courses and my one-on-one -on -one services so that is the most important goal. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And so I, I just want to just dig in just real quick too, before we transition, I'm, I'm with you, like the guests, I probably would never, I would still do a podcast because I love podcasting, but I, I always 
feel like I wouldn't do a podcast if it weren't for the guests, <laughs> you know, and the relationships that I build, because I feel like I've got these people now around me <laughs> that are so much smarter than me and I just <laughs> adore them. And if I ever have an idea, I can toss it by them and, you know, they might act, you know, they're more likely to respond and we've just built this great thing. It's Tell me about your relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So you're even going to ask me friendships. I never thought that it's possible. I thought, well, you interview a person and like, doo -doo -doo -doo, okay, goodbye. But it's, you, you meet a person, you start talking to them and it's a conversation for me. Well, you listen to my show. I don't just ask questions and have a list of questions. Sometimes I don't even get to that list because they start talking to a person. And of course I make sure that it's a conversation that gives value to the audience, but still, I just love it to be a flow. And then we get into a topic and then we start talking and it's so fascinating. It's so interesting. And then I got this wonderful friend. He's from New Zealand. He like Vince. I just love this guy. And he had me on his podcast and we met just through podcasting. Yeah. And this, this another friend, a woman who I never thought that we, we would become the good friends through podcasting too. It's just, just really amazing. Recently I interviewed one uh, lady from Australia and we bonded like right away when we started Aww. talking and it was, it was hilarious and it was so interesting. So yes, friend, Relationships, relationships, partnerships. Another mm -hmm. uh, guest of mine, she says, like, oh, let's talk later. I have some ideas. Maybe we can partner. So we talked, and then she would be my affiliate partner. Maybe I would be hers. And so there's future in yeah. these kind of relationships. So that's amazing. Well, and I feel like um, I feel a kindred spirit because I my husband said the other day, and I I thought this was brilliant, and it it's us to a T. Is our business is our personal life. Like we have family and they're the most important thing to us, but we play, you know, cash flow with our kids when they were growing up. I mean, we, it's just, <laughs> it's what we like. Like we like the game. We like, um, you know, interacting and, and providing value to people and mm -hmm, you know, just mm -hmm. the intrinsic way that business is. I like it. Like, I just like that as a lifestyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so it, when you get life. people on and you're like, I want to talk to other, you know, it's like a mastermind you don't have to pay for. He, I yes, mean, yes. not that podcasting is free, <laughs> mind you, but if you're able to monetize it at all, it's like you get paid to, mm -hmm. you know, have these great relationships and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah no, I, I get a little bit of more. coaching, like a little bit of free coaching from each one of them. I interviewed my mentor that I bought several courses from, and he's like this multiple seven figure uh, businessman. And he has a company he doesn't even coach anymore because he has people in his company who are coaches now. And he's just kind of overlooking everything. And I got him on my podcast. I couldn't even <laughs> believe that he agreed. And so did you release was, it already? Cause I'm about yes. ready to scroll down your list. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it? that was, that was at the beginning. It was maybe the third or the fifth one grant Baldwin. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh gosh. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. No, he's great. That's amazing. Grant, you know, Grant. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know him, but I've oh, taken yeah. his courses. <laughs> oh, you did? Yes. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. I took like That's three so of them. So yes. And then he said, yes. And he responded like right away. Yeah. He just said in the messenger, he responded, yes, sure. I would love to you just talk to my assistant and schedule the time. So yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's so great. I could not agree with you more. So I love that. And I think it's important too that, um, you know, one thing at night, and I have to bring up the monetization, like I said, we always, uh, I always bring it up that having that on the radar is so important because podcasting is great until it's a drain. And the more you're having to do the things like you already have an assistant. So yay. Like to me, that's, mm -hmm. that's scream sustainable. A lot of times what'll happen is people are you know, trying to save all this money, but ultimately you have to measure your, your success by number one, you have to offset costs. So, at, you know, just like an, uh, I compare it to like a digital company where you just might not get it the same day <laughs> you have to like yeah, build it and yeah. then get it. Uh, but ultimately these relationships, you know, if you, if you have an affiliate partnership with someone and that brings in income, that is profitability from your podcast it deserves to be part of the return on investment <laughs> calculation. And the same with, if we have someone on our show who becomes a client, but again, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, you know, a lot of times people 
view that as like, oh, you're just trying to get clients from having the show. And it's like, well, I'm actually trying to build relationships. I might not even want to have them as a client, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's a big jump to think that, you know, I just want to meet people that I want to work with. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, you look at what you do, you're interviewing people who want to get better at public speaking. They're going to look around and see that, you know, what you're doing, not offering it to them is almost a bigger disservice then it's almost like, well, I don't really want to offer it to you. Like if I don't offer it, Mm -hmm. it either means I was intimidated or it means that it like, I don't, you know, it's not a good fit. Mm -hmm. So so I don't, yeah. You mean, you mean, uh, yeah, you mean offer it to the guests because a lot of my guests, they are great speakers already. So they might not need my services. Like some of them are public speaking coaches too, or multiple TEDx speakers. And so that's why I, I was not even thinking of offering my services to my guests, but just, but to listeners. So that was like, my thinking was that my guests are, I am promoting them and we are building relationships like this. I am learning from them also. And my audience also get all that value. Yes. Yes. I love it. But, but what you're saying, that's an interesting twist. Hmm. That's yeah. something to think about. <laughs> well, and we'll talk about it here in a minute too. Just before we do, I just want to make sure, is there anything else? Did I miss anything on the who, what, or why about your show? Like things like who you're talking to, what's working already and why you're doing it. Is there anything else that you want to add before we transition? I don't think so. I think, <laughs> I think you covered everything. <laughs> awesome. Well, usually more things come up as we start to talk about it. So feel free mm-hmm. to do that. And do I have your permission to transition to the part where I start sharing my feedback and some ideas? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Well, before, uh, let's see, before we do, I always like to talk about the four P's to preeminence. Number one is to know your purpose, which is why we talk about your why and why you're in it, because without that, it's hard to keep going. Uh, And it's hard to stay on track too. I mean, a lot of us can meander around, but we really need to stay true to our why. Know your people, really dial in on your audience messaging, which we also talked about. I think that's just such a strong area for you. Uh, Optimizing the promotion of your show as you're getting more and all these things have to do with getting more listeners. So I, so a lot of times people just focus on promotion. It's an obvious one, but you really need all four of these and earning the proceeds to help pay for help (laughs) so that you don't feel like your podcast at some point is a drain. Usually early on, we feel like this is so fun. I can't imagine ever stopping, but, uh, you want to continue in that, you know, as you know, there's a lot of seasons to business and, podcasting is so powerful. I'd hate to lose it because we're transitioning to a new season or we're pivoting. Mm -hmm, I want to, you know, making sure that it's sustainable, um, is important and proceeds are a big part of it. Sound good. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm, I agree. (laughs) Okay. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, good. Well, let's, so the next thing I'm going to, we're going to share three things. We're going to talk about three things. Number one, what I feel you're strong at, in addition to the things that I you know, gushed about earlier, uh, some areas I see for opportunity. So some of them are priorities. Some of them, uh, you know, are just observations. So you can, if you are already it's on track, it's just good to talk about it now. Uh, and then the third thing is, is I, if I was like boss of the world and I told you to do one thing and you did it, I know it's going to get you more listeners in the next 30 days and definitely build continue to build an already strong foundation for your podcast. Mm, amazing. So, so you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. <I> can't wait. <laughs> so you're really, really strong at number one, your questions. I, they're very thoughtful. Um, and I, I am really, I just learned this week. I'm an empath. Like I literally can just feel when someone's something's happening. And I felt like when I was listening to your show that you number one, I felt like, do do you plan some of these questions ahead of time? Like that was a brilliant question. And others I could tell, like, she just thought about that on the fly. That is so brilliant. Like you're just really good at asking number one, the obvious question. And I think a lot of times, uh, hosts forget to ask that. And I do that's, and I think that's why I notice it when other people do. I'm like, Oh, that was the obvious question. I'm so glad you asked that because I feel like I'm in training for remembering to ask the obvious question. So, so very good job. And 
the reason I knew it, and I almost never hear this on other, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, you, you listen to a lot of podcasts, so tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I don't hear this a lot when the guest says, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that it was such a good question. Or I'm so glad you asked that. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and mm -hmm. it feels like, like, it feels like magic when someone says that, like, I feel yes, like I, yeah. I win. I win this episode. <laughs> Do you ever feel like that? Or am I just a total nerd like that? Well, no, it's true. It feels great when somebody says that. But what I notice is sometimes when people say, that's a very good question. Um, a lot of times it's a phrase to, but really you have to listen filler. to empath. Yeah, you would, uh, you would feel when it's true or when, it was, oh, wow. That, that is such a great question. Yeah. Nobody asked me. So you would know. But sometimes, a lot a lot of times, people use it as a filler to <laughs> give them time to think about the answer. Okay, that's a very good question. Let me answer it also in the same way. So And, and they are thinking. So, yeah. But yeah I, I love that answer. I, I'm so glad I brought this up with you because as a speaking coach, you would totally know that. And I 100% know exactly what you mean, but it's that surprised one where they're going, yeah, wow, yeah, when they were I really don't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. good one, mm -hmm. you know? So, and I heard, I heard that on your show quite a bit. So I was very impressed. Um, and then also, obviously you're an excellent speaker <laughs> and I, I mean, I could go on, but you know, like, you know, the things you're trying to do and I'm going to have to listen to more of your show so that I can do a better job. I think that a lot of us could use a lot of these techniques. I actually rarely like the solo episodes of a podcaster. Rarely mm -hmm. yours were short enough. And I literally came out going, Oh, either going, Oh yeah, I forgot. I need to do that. Or, Oh, I didn't even know. Like that's such a great idea. So I love those. Cool. Yeah. And the clear audience promise, which is also mm -hmm. rare. I rarely come on to the end of this and say, you nailed it. You got the audience promise. <laughs> so very good job. Very good job. And always be conscious of it. I mean, I'm again, speaking mm -hmm. to the choir, but just the more that you can remind the listener within the first 60 seconds, this is who I'm talking to. If you are this person and this is the transformation you want, I am going to give you this, this, and this let's start the show like mm -hmm. very concisely. And again, you're concise with it. You don't drag on and on. So um, and it's the first thing that we hear. So good. That was all the love. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> so, you. Yeah. So, and then some areas that I see opportunity and I definitely want you to be, feel free to just kind of bust in if you have questions or comments or, because not all of these are relevant to you. So it's, it's not uncommon for me to hear like, oh, well, I don't do that because, or, you know, something like that. So that's, that's completely valid also, but number one, um, and anybody who listens to the show, say it with me now, blog post. <laughs> so with, we talked about it earlier, the SEO help that a, that a blog post will provide have, and I have Libsyn too, and Libsyn makes it super easy. Usually what I do is I've got a plugin that will automatically feed the RSS in and then, and then I send the transcript to a writer and then we'll go in and we'll write a blog post and, and edit it. So we'll optimize it later when we have time. And I mm -hmm. usually will do that with the more popular shows. So if there's an episode that is getting the most listens, those are the ones that I'll go in sooner and beef up with SEO, because again, it lives forever. So if that's the entry point to my show is one of the best episodes, that's good. And if people are listening it to it more, it's usually resonating more with them. Um, and usually it's a guest also. So it's usually, well, I mean, all of ours are guests, but it usually has a lot to do with a guest. Either the guest shared it a lot or they're just well-known. And so yeah. it just magic, like they still, I would love to say that, you know, people can share in it. I mean, it does the people who are not known, if they share it, it's a lot higher of a, yeah. um, engagement than the people who don't share it, but if they are well-known, they just crush it. So that's mm -hmm. always helpful too. Um, so the blog post I also, the other thing is that I would encourage you to, and again, I apologize. I didn't listen to the last part of your show. Do you have a call to action at the end of your show? 
Yes, always at the end. I say subscribe, give the five-star rating and a review, and then you have the message, bring it out into the world and always speak with power. So that's usually I say the same thing at the end. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So and can I go back? Can I go back just yeah. a second? Just yeah. to ask. So you have a person because when you said blog post and before when you talked about this, I tried blogging and it's just it takes so much time. And I so just to have somebody write it for me, right? So you have a writer, but you said we do it. So you do it together, like they write and you look at it or blog posts for my world are messy. So because the more episodes, like you do two episodes a week and things are flying by, I don't have like a team of 10 people who could just, you know, Me produce too. my whole show. So like, you know, like most podcasters at this stage where it's like, we've got a great message. It's resonating as fast as I can get out there. It's getting picked up. And so mm -hmm. with that in mind, we just have to be okay. The, the biggest problem I see is everybody wants everything perfect. So they want like, oh, I've got this problem. I mean, I have a process, but with the blog post, it's inconsistent. I'm going to say it. Okay. It's inconsistent. Consistently, a blog post is created from Libsyn based on the RSS feed. So that description, we write a decent description and get it out there. And then that's what becomes the blog post. When I'm mm, like, okay, okay, I want to write a blog post on this. I have the, we have everything transcribed. So I push it through Otter and then I actually might, I have a content assistant, like the person that my go-to person. So I'm, a, I'm mm -hmm. picturing it's the same person you have as an assistant, somebody I trust who mm -hmm. knows good mm -hmm. content from bad content. Um, and she listens, she actually proofreads the transcription the while transcription while she's pulling four quotes. She pulls one quote from me and three quotes from my guest. And then that takes about 15 minutes to make into graphic arts because we have templates. But so she's pulling the quotes and then she's marking time on clips. So she's got, so we've actually got spreadsheets to keep it all organized, but she's like marking time on the clips. And then the transcript, now that it's clean, you know, it's clean can number one, be part of a YouTube video. And number two, it can be sent to our writer. And what, what I've done is I've created an outline. Like this is what I want my show notes to look like. And it hasn't come out on next step nation yet. Cause we've actually refined this process. I've given my per myself permission not to do this every time. And mm -hmm. suddenly I'm freed up. Now I'm going to have more, better content more often than ever before. So it's amazing how powerful that is. But mm -hmm. what you're going to be seeing with Next Step Nation is there will be, you know, there's an outline. So it's like, this is what happens at the beginning, or this is the outcome that I want. Please use this transcript and make it into something that looks like this. Cause generally this is what we're talking about. And this is generally what I want somebody to read about on the show. Does that help? Mm -hmm. And yes, then they yes. send it. Okay. Do I edit it? Yeah. When I have time, I go back and I read it and I, you know, if you know how to use a WordPress editor, you can just go in and then just edit it however you want. But for myself, mm -hmm. I like to go back and edit. I don't like to write stuff. <laughs> and so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. If I'm going to read mm -hmm. it anyway, I'll do it and, and I'll do it at my own time. Like when the writer sends it back, it gets published. And then I go back when I have a chance and then I'll edit it, but it's all about driving traffic. And at the end of the day, the blog post is written. There's mm -hmm. great content that, you know, maybe not to our highest standards, but there's great content still because our guests are amazing. And mm -hmm. then at the top is that embedded Libsyn or whatever platform anybody's using out there is that mm -hmm. player. And so every time someone plays it, that's another download. And so okay. So there's, um, and I don't know, they measure it different all the time, but, but that's one more play that you're getting, uh, is right in that. So you imagine someone and then to their links to subscribe or to go to the mm -hmm. podcast platform. So it's just one page. That's just chock full of awesomeness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for so basically. It's, oh yeah. So basically the, trans the transcript of, so you don't have to write a blog post. It's just the transcript of the show. And I've done that too. I've literally copied and pasted the transcript. Okay. I mean, Mark Cuban, mm -hmm. he was on a podcast um, movement event today. He was a keynote speaker live today. And he was talking about that very thing. He's just like, uh, because, you know, he launched this company fireside. And today, one of his announcements were that was that, um, 
that Fireside now has like a live transcription. And he was like, yeah, I mean, that's a huge thing is just to take those transcripts and throw it on a blog and people mm-hmm. can find your show. So, okay, um, yeah. so even if you did that, you know, we, we choose to like make it into an article, but, okay. um, mm-hmm. I, if you look at OMH agency in our old podcast, you'll find that we do have podcasts where it's the full transcription, same thing. Cause we just mm-hmm. want that content out there for people to find where they're at. Does that make sense? All right. Absolutely. That's perfect. Yeah. That's okay, brilliant. Cool. 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 Um, and then too, like how long are they going to read the transcript before they start listening? Right. <laughs> They're going to read like yeah, two yeah. paragraphs and be like, oh, I could just listen to this. Mm-hmm. Or if you, you end up making videos, uh, one thing that we'll do too is sometimes we'll, and we kind of test it and just make decisions. We don't do it the same every time, but sometimes we'll put the YouTube video and embed that instead. So we'll either Mm -hmm. have the Libsyn embed or we'll have the video embedded. Uh, Mm -hmm. And with the video, there's always the subtitles. So they're able just to read them and that way. So there's that too. It's interesting that you're also on Libsyn because most people are on Buzzsprout and I'm like, oh, I'm the only one. (laughs) No, no. I, but I, I know it's Jenna Kuchas. Jenna Kucha is on Libsyn and I, I kind of learned it from her. That's why I made it. Yeah. Well, in mm-hmm. Libsyn, I mean, I have, I, I think Libsyn's the best. And do mm-hmm. I think that every single feature is the best if you compare them side by side? It changes so fast that I don't mm-hmm. care. I'm just one of those people. I don't chase algorithms. I don't chase every little feature, but I do chase mm-hmm. who is the leader, who is the one that everybody goes back to. It's the same reason I use WordPress. You can easily mm-hmm. find developers. I mean, and I feel like Libsyn's like that. They just, yeah. And they're so it. helpful. Yeah. 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 So whenever I had problems, they responded right away. So yeah. That, that's well, and if, why, a, yeah. if a software integrates with anything, they integrate with Libsyn. Like, oh, in fact, Fireside, another one of their announcements was that if you, when you record on Fireside, you're able to push one button and it goes to Libsyn. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know how many times I've, I started podcasting over three years ago. And from day one, I was, well, I mean, Libsyn was, I, I don't know if, how many others there were, but, but Libsyn and honestly, Libsyn looked the same last year as it did when I first started, but they have recently upgraded their interface. But, um, at the end of the day, I don't know how many times I've, I've thought, I am so glad I'm with Libsyn because they're the ones doing that. Right. Like they're oh, the ones good. integrated again. So, hmm. um, Buzzsprout's that. awesome. Yeah. I know that Buzzsprout, if I'm beginning, like if I was a beginner and I didn't, I didn't know about SEO, I didn't know, I didn't want control. I just want it done for me. I don't know if I would use Libsyn. I just think that if you're like, I want, you know, I want to be able to hire somebody and then they can level up and Libsyn has that kind of, you know, mm-hmm. and like D- D- my business coach, Deanna, well, you know, I actually know you through her. So, oh, she that's uses- right. Deanna, yeah. you know what? The more you're talking, I was like, oh my gosh, you have to meet Deanna. I almost told you that. That's so funny. <laughs> Thank like, you, Deanna. Yes, I love she's her. my dear friend now. I mean, she started as just my coach, but now we're we have such wonderful friendship and and partnership. We became business partners too. Oh. We were we were affiliate partners for Dean and Tony's program together. Oh. Yeah. So oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. This it's like the whole world <laughs> makes sense again. Thank you for reminding me. I apologize for forgetting, but yeah. That makes total sense. Okay, cool. So it was um, so I still have a couple more things. Was that helpful so far? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm writing down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Excellent. Also now, did I, in fact, um, did I hear an ad at the beginning? Like there was the intro and then an ad, is that correct? Or was I wrong? There's no ad. Okay. Perfect. What what did I think I heard? Okay. (laughs) So I love, I love your beginning. Um, and then one thing that you mentioned while we were talking is the whole, like you have people on your show who are, um, they are power speakers and, um, being able to connect their, like they might have a topic that's about, you know, chiropractic, like that one was brilliant. Cause it's completely relates to public speaking and, you know, being, being, having power in our voice, but how are you able to connect? Like, do you make it obvious for the audience every time that happens? Like, are you like, Hey, you know, somehow at some point bring that in, like, you know, okay, this might not be about speaking with power, but we can see from what you're doing that you speak powerfully, or do you kind of connect that somehow in the middle of it? 
Sometimes I do. Yeah. Sometimes I could do it at the beginning. Sometimes I do it in the middle. There were a couple episodes when I completely forgot. I was just engrossed in the conversation and I <laughs> loved it so much that I, I even forgot that it's about public speaking. But then at the end, <laughs> at the end, I then said, it was, okay, it was like, give your speech to the, like, you have this last, because I usually finish with this question when I oh, say yeah. you're speaking to the whole world and you have 60 seconds. So what would you say? So for me, I try, I keep it in mind that this is about speaking and people probably come here who are entrepreneurs and they want to become better at speaking. That's why when I talk to them, I ask them, okay, what's your experience with speaking? Because a lot of them, they were TEDx speakers or they have speaking experience. So I tie it. Uh, or sometimes I would say within the middle or at the beginning, I, I would say that these are entrepreneurs who are listening. And of course, you speak with power. So I would love for you to share your tips. So I may Make it clear for the audience that they might not hear tips about public speaking, but they will hear tips for their entrepreneurship journey. Plus, mm. they will hear an example of a, somebody, an expert who speaks with power. And I would even say it sometimes like, OK, so you see, so like you maybe you heard this in on this episode or not. Sometimes I would talk to a person and then I suddenly would start speaking to the audience like, see you guys. So that is what you. La, 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 la. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Like sometimes I would jump and just talk to the, to the listeners and then go back to my guests. I love that approach. I think that that's really powerful. And again, I, I feel a little bit at disadvantage because I heard such a great example. I mean, it was obvious that he should be on that show. It just fit right in with the whole, everything that you're talking about. Um, I mean, for myself and what it sounds like what you're doing is working great for myself. I'd probably put it I put it in my outline just so that at some point I remember, like, did I ever say you're a great example of, yeah. it, especially at the end, if you're able to kind of track back and go, you know what, these are two, re two things that I saw and what you just did that really is an example of what I'm trying to get across here, you know? Mm -hmm. And then that way, number one, your, your guest is like, oh, I wasn't, I was just trying to share my story. Like they're yeah. being normal. And then you're also constantly you know, you said at the beginning, what people are going to get out of it. And then you're able to say, look, you just got it. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Um, but mm -hmm. that I would be inclined to put that in the outline. Cause for me, cool. I'm like you, like I have a hard time. I, I have a hard time just not continuing every conversation <laughs> through. And so I could, I would not trust myself personally to remember that, but it's really mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. and then also, um, okay. So one of the things that we talked about is your, obviously you have a really big presence in a fa in Facebook in general, but then specifically having this connection to that big group. And I would just spend some time optimizing and pretending, putting yourself in their shoes. Like, what do they see? I'm going to assume that, you know, you walk in and say, I'm going to assume that, that they just heard something or they just read something that I wrote and they're going to click on my face. This is what they see. Does that tell them any, like, am I, am I, uh, am I in charge of this narrative? And if I am, mm -hmm. what is the next thing that I want them to do? And I think that your podcast is a huge advantage because it's a, it's just a really soft, but helpful next step in their journey. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I lead them to my group because when they click on my profile, like on my face, then they will see my cover photo. And that's that my cover photo invites them to my community to speak oh, with love our it. community. And then there's also the link right in the description of the cover photo. So that's where I, I am leading them. But Good. the podcast is in the, yeah. So I just put it in the link tree, I guess. Well, and if, because if through the group, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, go ahead. Like, no. When they join the group, that's also, that's kind of a lead magnet because I invite them to give me the email if they want to get notifications because we have monthly free Zoom sessions when for oh. free, I, I teach people, train them in public speaking. And it's, it's usually, it's just fun. It's, it's, it's a lot yeah. of fun. So usually there's like a lead magnet. That's why I chose that kind of path. I love it. And, and we're so limited in, especially in Facebook groups, because there's so little information that's given when they, when they find mm -hmm. us through a group. So I, I really like that you're doing that. You're trying to bring them into your own group. So I think that that's really mm -hmm. helpful. And then you do have control at that point, what you want their next step in that journey to be. So I think that that's mm -hmm. great. 
Uh, the other thing is that, and this also ties in with the blog, <clears throat> excuse me, is that, um, giving them a next step. I mean, I love, uh, first of all, I love that you're doing that. And, and do you do that in your podcast now? Do they have like a, do you have like a, Hey, I've got a group. You should come in it at some point. So like, I, do you invite them to the next step with you? Not when I am with the guest, because if I am interviewing a guest, then I focus on them and I invite people to follow my guest. Because for me, I think that that's my goal. That's my role at that moment is to promote my guest. The, at the very end, I say subscribe. So I, I mean, subscribe to the show. So subscribe and leave us the review. So that is the part that I get them. But during my solo episodes, that's when I invite them to DM me if they want a one-on-one -on -one, or I invite them to my group. And so what would you say? Should I be consistent? Always give them this, like always invite them to my group or always invite them to my DMs or can I do different invitations? Well, it, first marketing is testing. So I, I would love to just say, this is for sure. If it were me, what I would do is exactly, I was just about to tell you, don't change what you're doing. I think what you're doing is really good because it's, you have a plan. You're like, when my guests on, it's all about them in your, in your beginning where you say exactly what they're going to hear. I don't think it's wrong to also include in there, you know, if you want more, this is what, you know, if you love it, you're listening to it. You're like, what now, what do I do now? Then this is where you go. And we, and you can get more of this because I've listened to shows and felt like, oh, I just want more. And then I have to go hunt it. You know, I have to go hunting for, you know, and then I didn't find the right thing or, you know, how that can be where it's like, there's all these different things to find. And, um, and so I, I always feel like it's helpful to the listener to know that, okay, I'm listening to you. I'm, I trust you, please just make it easy. Where do I go next? <laughs> you know? So okay. I wouldn't yeah. be afraid to lightly say, this is the next step now okay. in, I, I, in fact, I think we talked about this beforehand, but in our first 12 episodes of next step nation, we did what I call the masterclass series. And I interviewed a lot of people who are just at the top of their game. They're crushing it at podcasting or just successful in some area. Um, but I, one of our, in, in fact, it was, in, it was episode 12 is with, um, with Tom, he's from interview valet and he's the owner of interview valet. And he, he shared something. So he interview valet, they, uh, they help guests get booked on people's shows. So they take them and, but they also prepare them. So not with speaking, but they prepare them in a way. I mean, they probably do help them with speaking too, but they help them find number one, the right shows to be on. And which wouldn't that be great if guests all, you know, went on the right shows, that's super awesome. And then mm -hmm. number two, they create a landing page for them and help them develop what they're going to say when they get that opportunity at the end to say like, this is where you find me. This is what mm -hmm. I do. And as a host, we also need to, like, I feel like that's hugely valuable as a, as a host because we're the ones investing all the time and everything. And if we showcase our guests, that's awesome, but we are also serving our audience. And so like what Tom, if you listen to that episode is awesome. He explains it so well, but he always recommends having an easy next step and a, okay, I'm on board. I want full in. Don't make me go through your funnel. And I thought that was so fun. And he does three, actually, he does a, a easy, medium and hard. And I'm always like, how do we condense this so that it's, <laughs> it takes less time. But, um, so that's, I just would, I don't think it's like a top priority because I like where you're going with it. It's really organic, but I just think that maybe kind of play around with that and how can that incorporate? I'm glad that you do it and really put a focus on it for your solo. So I feel like it's not getting ignored. So that makes me really happy, but I do feel like there's probably a way since knowing that typically the guest episodes probably are bringing a lot of the new listeners yeah, yeah. that, and, that and those new well. listeners get some kind of easy, how do I find you kind of thing? So helpful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. And then also we touched on speakers as having people on your show who could potentially turn into clients. Mm -hmm. My, I had a podcast called breakaway agents and I only interviewed real estate agents and I really just wanted them to be clients <laughs> or I wanted to find out who I wanted to work with because I've been a real, like I've been a real estate agent. I'm an agent. Now, uh, we had an office 
And I feel like real estate is kind of my place. They're my people, but I also know I don't like all real estate agents. And I was dealing with top producers. So some of them, most of them are amazing. Like I love them. If I go to California, there's certain ones I meet, meet up with. If I go to New York, I know which people I'm going to meet up. If I go to Oklahoma, there's one I want to meet there, but there are a couple that I was a little bit like, Meh, peace out. Like, thanks for being on my show. <laughs> I'm, we're done. <laughs> so that was really my whole thing. As I, and we talked about this earlier. These, mm -hmm. This is where we get to meet people. We get to figure out like, man, I, it just makes sense that we do something and we don't always know what yeah. that something is at the like, end. Like there's a click. Exactly. And I, Deanna, same way. I'm just like, oh, how do we just hang out? Like, what, how do we make that happen? You know? Right. <laughs> and so, and you now too. So I just, yes. um, so I feel like um, there, what, there's a good balance. So I wouldn't again, ever only do it where I have people on my show that I want as clients. I, but it is a great place, a great transition to be able to work like that. I would just be open to that. And I know for us, when we have guests on our show, some of the guests like right now, hot seat, ultimately I could help everybody that I'm talking with. Um, but, but that's not my goal per se, but it's, legitimately a, a next step that could happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and so just kind of opening that up because think about what great content that is, you know, as you're helping that person, it's helping other people. And then, um, you know, kind of hearing their story or even success stories. Like you, one thing, um, there was another person I interviewed, she's been in podcasting for over 10 years and she still is running the same podcast and she has her clients on all the time. And she said, um, you know, she said that, it has increased her lifetime customer value by doing that because I'm in there. Plus she's amazing. So I don't know if, how much it helps because she's just incredible, but, but it has, and she attributes a lot of that to podcasting because she's able to continually nurture that relationship at a deeper level. Cause you know how interviews are, it's just more of a deeper conversation. Yeah. So anyway, so that, mm -hmm. that's kind of that side of it. Well, cool. Those were all my areas of opportunity. Like, was that helpful or do you have any questions uh, yeah. before oh, we move yeah. into number three? No, absolutely. I asked my questions. So good. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. good. <laughs> good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at the end of the day, especially after talking with you, it seems like, um, you know, usually I like to leverage something you're already doing really well because as you know, it takes the least amount of effort and investment. Um, I think, you know, still knowing that I think your content and your guests are so good that if you were able to incorporate a blog post, I know it will, it, it'll take no time at all that you're going to see like, and it's one more place to track. So you're able to go, Hey, what was my website traffic? Like, what did I get on my blog? And mm -hmm. so not only will you be like, Oh, downloads are up. That's really cool. You're also going to go to that website and that's a legitimate count on how much additional traffic you're getting to your show. You can also in incorporate, I highly recommend incorporating that call to action that we talked about for your show mm -hmm. into the blog post. Because one thing I always say is every single page on your, on your website, including blog posts, is like an employee and all those employees need a goal. They need a task that they need to accomplish and oh, the tools that they need to do it. So that would be mm -hmm. my number one thing. I think call to action you could do later, but the very first thing would be to get that blog post, get the system so that it feels light to you. Helpful. Absolutely. And I knew that it would be something around <laughs> that because, because to, to me, that tip when you were speaking about it, I started already planning in my head how I can do it. And it was just so, yeah, I could see that it could really make a difference right away. And I wondered what your last one would be. What is this number one that I should, that, yeah, I, I thought that it would be that. Yes, yes. Perfect. You're right on. I'll right definitely on. find, yes, I'll definitely talk to my assistant. Right. Well, and I'll say too, you know, Next Step Nation is our third podcast. I, my shows are testing grounds. So I, you know, I want listeners like everyone else, but I'm constantly like trying and testing and what works and what doesn't, and there's a lot of data that doesn't matter. So trying to kind of evaluate that too. And at the end of the day, I was able to launch next step nation and immediately jump to a higher number because we're implementing things that we were doing in the first shows. So I just feel like with confidence, I know that the blog post helps a ton. <laughs> so, so amazing. Yes. I love it. I, yes. And see SEO 
I haven't thought of that. I actually haven't leveraged my website enough. And that's why this will be such a, it's such a great tip overall. It's not even just for podcasting, but basically mm-hmm. you're giving me a business tip <laughs> how well, to grow my business in general. Especially if you incorporate that call to action, because mm-hmm. really, if you think about a blog post, every single one becomes a landing page, right? I mean, I have a, I have a fish. Okay. Here's a good example. This is not even podcasting. I have a fish. So I'm in Montana. I'm in Billings, Montana, USA. And one of my first clients was a fishing guide with an out. He was an outfitter and he took people out on fishing trips in Montana. Awesome. Right. I'm like, this is a dream client in Montana. Like, this is so cool, but they don't, you know, it's not like he's rich. And so it's not like he can afford this big fancy thing. And so, and of course I was affordable because I just was starting my agency. He retired this year still. Okay. He ran blog posts. I did what I called my secret sauce. It was blog posts with social media posts that were pulled from content there and then email campaigns based on the blog mm-hmm. post. So everything worked together. He ran that for three years. He just retired and said, okay, keep all the lead magnet stuff up because I don't want to lose it, but I'm not going to do any more because I retire. <laughs> He's still like 14 leads. He got 14 leads last week. And I'm like, I'm like, Chris, wow. do you realize <laughs> this? You could sell this. Like you could find a local outfitter. This is a a marketable asset that you have. And I also had a client who was, uh, they did home inspections and they were located in Washington state, USA. And that's where there's rain and there's always dry Mm -hmm. rot and mold and stuff. And, and having an inspector who does mold inspections, it's a big deal. And so we would write articles about what they do. So different kinds of inspections, but every time we came to mold inspections, they were like, that's not how we do it. You need to stop writing about mold inspections. I was like, okay, first of all, that's unacceptable. Like you have to write about mold inspections because that's where everybody wants to hear. So I, that's like, was my beginning of podcasting was like, okay, I'm going to interview you and I'm going to make these blog posts the way that you want them to sound. And so when podcasting came around, it only made sense that, so basically I do the same thing. It's just that we start with a podcast and then we've got this transcript and then we've got all these pieces of content. So I love it. So like you said, it's like, you just want to, you know, SEO the heck out of it, just like you would with any other campaign and leverage this content that you're already creating. Cause it's amazing. Perfect. Wow. Awesome. <laughs> and, and so Natasha, um, where, where is the best, I know you've got your website, um, and we will have links in our, uh, show notes. It'll be, it, even if you find us, uh, find this episode on Spotify or anything, uh, Natasha's link will be right in the description. So you'll be able to click right from there, but why don't you share with everyone? Where's the best place for people to find you? Oh, I think the easiest thing is to say, speak with power on Apple or Spotify, <laughs> but definitely my website is just that if I only say it, it might be hard for people. So you guys can check it in the description. It's Natasha Bazilevich.com. So that's my website and that's where you can download my free video course and you can join my group there and get in my social media. Also, I will apply everything I learned and I will put my social Yay. media handles in. <laughs> <laughs> and buttons there so that people can also get on my social media from my website, but yes, I, nat- natashabasilevich.com. I love it. I love it. And thanks again to Diana for introducing us. I'm just so excited. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap? I just would love to say thank you and say that you, this is such an amazing format. It's, it's incredible because Aww. I'm learning, people are learning together with me. I, I got so much value from you and I enjoyed the conversation. So for me, this was just such an unbelievable experience and just a pleasure to meet Aww. an interesting and fun person. <laughs> Oh, well, thank Thank you so much, Natasha. It's just been a joy for me too. And again, I, I love, you know, I love, I loved having to listen to your show, (laughs) you know, because I wouldn't have known it, you know, I may have ended up knowing about it, but this way it fast tracked me learning about you. So I appreciate you coming for sure. Thank well, you every- so much. Oh yeah, you're welcome. And thank you. And Hey everybody, thank you so much for listening. Remember, don't be average, be brave, take action and make magic happen. Thanks for listening.